Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about Cartesian products of sets. And in order to do that, we need to talk about ordered pairs. So a lot of you may be familiar with the idea of ordered pairs from algebra. In algebra, you may have plotted ordered pairs in the XY coordinate system. But even if you're not familiar with ordered pairs from algebra, we're looking at them a little bit differently. We're going to be thinking of them in terms of sets. So for example, here in my diagram, I have three ordered pairs. I have the ordered pair negative 1, 2, the ordered pair 3, 4, and the ordered pair 2, negative 2. Each one of the pairs of numbers there in parentheses are called ordered pairs. So we're going to think of them as a single object. So for example, 2 comma negative 2 with parentheses around it is actually a single element of the set S, as is 3, 4, and the ordered pair negative 1, 2. Now the reason they're called pairs is because there are two parts to it, a first component and a second component. And the reason why they're called ordered is because the order matters. The ordered pair negative 1, 2 is not the same thing as the ordered pair 2, negative 1. They're not equal. So 2, negative 1 is not an element of the set S. In general, the ordered pair AB has a first component A and a second component B. And the ordered pair AB does not generally equal BA. Unless it just so happens you're talking about an ordered pair that has the same number in the first and second component. So we say two ordered pairs are equal provided that their first components are equal and their second components are equal. So in your homework you might be asked to determine whether a given statement is true or false, and you might have something like the ordered pair 3, 7 equals the ordered pair 7, 3. You know they're talking about ordered pairs because of the parentheses, and you would say this is false because they have to be in the same order in order to be equal. Be very careful because we're also working with sets and some sets only have two numbers in them. And I don't want you to confuse those with ordered pairs. With the sets, you have the curvy brackets. So if I ask you if the set 6, 3 is equal to the set 3, 6, the answer would actually be true because in sets, the order doesn't matter. So it's an important distinction between the parentheses notation indicating an ordered pair and the curvy bracket notation that's indicating a set. So what we're gonna do with these ordered pairs is we're going to form sets of ordered pairs by starting with sets that are not ordered pairs. This is very different from the other set operations that we've done. So for example, if we think of the set 2, 4 as being the set A and the set containing E and F as being the set B, and we want to form their Cartesian product, then what this is telling us is that the first coordinates all come from the first set, set A. So when any time we form an ordered pair, we're going to need to get the first coordinate from A. So all of our ordered pairs will either have a 2 as the first coordinate or a 4 as the first coordinate. And the definition also tells us that all of the second coordinates come from the set B. So that means that every time we form an ordered pair, we're going to have either an E or an F as the second coordinate. So to form this set, we're going to be organized about it so that we hit every possibility but only once. First, I'm going to start by forming those ordered pairs that begin with the element 2 as the first coordinate. So we have 2 matched with E and then 2 matched with F. And then we're going to use 4 as the first coordinate. So the only possibilities there are 4 being matched with E and 4 being matched with F. This set is considered the Cartesian product of the two sets we started with. It has elements that are ordered pairs. The first components of those ordered pairs come from the first set containing 2 and 4. The second coordinates of those ordered pairs come from the set containing E and F. So let's try an example where we're given two sets and we have to find Cartesian products. For part A, we're going to find A cross B, and for part B, we're going to cross B with itself. So to do this, for part A, we need to start with 
all of the ordered pairs that have A as the first component. So here we've matched A with 1, A with 2, and A with 3. That takes care of all of the pairs of coordinates that start with A. We still need to find all the pairs that start with a B. So we look at the B and we match it with each one of the second coordinates again. So we have B with 1, B with 2, and B with 3. So this would be A cross B, or the Cartesian product of A with B. So now let's find B cross B. So for B cross B, we're only working with the set B. This is going to be both the first coordinates and the second coordinates. So I'm going to start by looking at the coordinate 1 as my first coordinate. I can have 1 with 1, 1 with 2, or 1 with 3. Then I'm going to look at 2 as my first coordinate. 2 with 1, 2 with 2, and 2 with 3. But I'm not done. We could also have 3 as our first coordinate. We can have 3 with 1, 3 with 2, and 3 with 3. Now one of the things we can observe about Cartesian products is the relationship between the cardinalities of the original sets, or the number of elements in the original sets, and the number of elements in the Cartesian product. Notice that the number of elements in A cross B turned out to be 6. It makes sense that it did because there were two elements in set A and each one of those we had to match up with each of the three elements in set B. So we ended up with 2 times 3, which is equal to 6 elements in the new set. This is actually a formula for the cardinal number of a Cartesian product. The number of elements in A cross B is the number of elements in A times the number of elements in B. For example, if you had the set A contained A, B, and C, and the set B contained 1, 2, 3, and 4, then the number of elements in A would be 3, and the number of elements in B would be 4. And instead of actually having to construct the Cartesian product and count how many elements are in it, we could just use this formula. So we would know that the number of elements in the Cartesian product of A with B is going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. Now you can confirm this by actually listing them out. You would match up A with 1, 2, 3, and 4, B with 1, 2, 3, and 4, and C with 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so notice if you count these up, we actually do end up with 12 elements inside of this set. Now one thing that does confuse folks about working with Cartesian products is that the number of elements is counted by counting ordered pairs. Each one of these is a single element. Yes, each element has a structure that contains two components, but we only count each ordered pair as one single element. So you see here we have those 12 individual ordered pairs that are the elements of the set. Now the number of elements in the Cartesian product of A with B is the same as the number of elements in the Cartesian product of B with A. So in other words it doesn't matter if A is all the first components and B is the second components of the ordered pairs or the other way around you're still going to get the same product and that's because multiplication is commutative. For example let's suppose that we had set A was D E F and set B was 5 10. The number of elements in A is 3 and the number of elements in B is 2. So according to our cardinal number formula, the number in the Cartesian product of A and B is going to be 3 times 2, which is 6. We can confirm that, by the way, by actually listing out the elements of this Cartesian product. And you can see, yeah, we have six elements there. All right, now what if we turn it around and find B cross A? We're going to have the same six pairs, but in a different order, right? So instead of D5, for example, we have 5D, but there are still six of them. So the order in which we have the Cartesian product changes the way the elements look, but it doesn't change the number of elements. It's still going to be the same. All right, so here's an example you might find in your My Math Lab homework. It might not actually tell you what sets A and B are, but just tell you how many elements are in them, and then ask you to find how many elements are in the Cartesian products. So here we have, if the cardinality of A is 12, and the cardinality of B is 7, then find the cardinality of the Cartesian product of A and B and the cardinality of the Cartesian product of B and A. 
To work this out, you would apply the cardinal number formula. You would say, okay, I know that the number of elements in A cross B is going to be the number of elements in A times the number of elements in B, which in this case is 12 times 7, which is going to be equal to 84. Now you could also go through and work it out for B cross A, but we know that the number of elements in A cross B is the same as B cross A. So this is still going to be 84 even if you turn the product around. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.